Hello and welcome. This video will be interesting and will be a challenge. A challenge because I have created a lot of videos covering selenium, but this one video will cover all of those videos. So I hope this video helps you out. Selenium is a family of three products, Selenium IDE, Selenium WebDriver, and Selenium Grid. Selenium IDE is the record and playback tool. Selenium WebDriver communicates with the browser by sending and receiving commands. Selenium Grid executes our tests across multiple browsers, operating systems, and machines. Our focus will be Selenium WebDriver, and it is important to have an understanding of a programming language like Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Python, or Ruby. I believe programming is the foundation for automation. Selenium WebDriver is an API with many commands. However, I prefer to keep it simple and place most of the commands into five groups and one class. The groups are browser, navigation, web element, wait, and switch. The class is actions, which helps us perform actions using our mouse and keyboard. There is no doubt in my mind, you will learn Selenium in one hour. I did not say master Selenium. If you want to master Selenium, then watch my full video covering Core Java, then move on to my full video covering Selenium. They are more detailed. You can stop at the Selenium Interactions video. Now, let's look at the application under test. It is called Welcome to the Internet. There are a lot of examples on this site for automation scenarios. I'm going to copy the URL and you can follow along with me and write your code because I am going to write my code step by step. Web driver driver. Web driver driver controls the browser. I'm going to hover the web driver and you see it is the main interface to use for testing. Let's create two configuration methods from TestNG. TestNG is one of the test frameworks for Java. At before method. Public void set up. This method will operate like a precondition to set up our test. Web driver manager dot Chrome driver dot set up driver equals new Chrome driver. Chrome is our browser after method. will operate like a post condition. After every test, it will tear down our test by closing the browser. Public void, tear down. Next will be the browser commands. The browser commands are a group of commands that perform actions on a browser. There is a total of six browser commands. We have close, get, get current URL, get page source, get title, and quit. One of the first steps is to load a page. With Selenium, the command for loading a page is driver.get. And I'm gonna paste the URL. Now, I added this command to the setup method so it will load before each test method. The after method will also have a browser command. It will close after each test method. Driver dot. It is best to use quit to turn down our test because it closes the browser window and stops running the driver while close 
only closes the window. Driver dot quit. However, I am going to comment out this step because Selenium runs very fast. I want you to see the application page after Selenium executes. Our first test is at test. Test indicates a test method from testng. Public void demo browser commands. Let's print the title and the URL. Shortcut for printing to the console is s out south. Driver dot get title and south driver dot get current URL. Let's run. It pass. We see the title, which is the internet and URL. Next are the navigation commands. The navigation commands are a group of commands that also load a page with the ability to refresh the page, move backwards in the browser's history, and move forward in the browser's history. There are four navigation commands. In alphabetical order, we have back, forward, refresh, and to. The next method starts with at test, public void, demo, navigation, commands, driver dot navigate, dot. Let's start with two. This command operates just like get from the browser command. Go to the AUT and we can directly load the checkboxes page by copying the URL. Go back to the code and paste the URL. Paste the URL, we go to that page and let's also print the URL all right, south driver dot get current URL. Let's also navigate back to the home page by writing driver dot navigate dot back. Print this URL too by writing south driver dot get current URL. Printing both URLs show that we navigated to the checkboxes page. Then went back to the home page. Let's run. It executed so fast, I didn't see the checkboxes page load, but we see that it did right here. That's the URL. And this is the URL to the home page. Next are the web element commands. A web element is anything you see on a web page. As a result, they have the most commands at 16. These commands perform actions on web elements. However, before we perform an action, we must find the web element. Selenium provides eight locators to find the web element. My first choice is the ID locator because it has a unique value. Next is the name locator because in most applications, name also has a unique value. Sometimes I skip the name locator and go straight to the XPath or CSS selector locator. I like XPath and CSS selector because they are powerful. So I'm fine with both locators. The last four locators are used if they are the only option available. My plan is to show you all eight locators in this video. Now, for the AUT, the first locator 
will find the form authentication link. Then we are going to click the link using a web element command. Go to our, our code and write at test public void demo web element commands. Got to watch out for my typing. Bingo. To find and click the link, we write driver dot find element by dot. At this point, all eight Selenium locators are shown in this IntelliSense in alphabetical order. Class name, CSS selector, ID, link text, name, partial link text, tag name, and XPath. We are going to select link text, which has a parameter of the exact text from our application. By link text, we write form authentication. Form authentication is a complete name for the link. And we click the link. That's it for finding the link and clicking the link. Go back to our AUT. After clicking the link, we will enter Tom Smith in the username field. The password is super secret password with an exclamation point, but we're not going to enter the password. However, we will click the login button. Do you see this error message? We will also get the error message. Start by inspecting the username field. There are three attributes, type, name, and ID. Name and ID have the same username value. Our code will be driver dot find element by name. And the name was user name. We have a lot of web element commands. But send keys is the command, is the method to simulate typing into an element. Tom Smith, spell it right, is the value we want to type. The first locator choice is ID, but I went ahead and used name as the locator. Now, let's go back to the AUT again. And this time, we're going to inspect the login button. Mm -hmm. It has more than one value for class. We're going to use FA hyphen sign hyphen in. Now I'm going to, I remember it. I was going to copy it, but I think I'll get it right if I just go back here and write driver dot find element by class name, the value was FA sign hyphen N, that's it. And for the button, we click. The last step is to get the error message. So now I'm gonna go back and we have to inspect the error message. And we see it has a value of ID, an attribute of ID with the value of flash. So now we write driver dot find element by ID and the value was flash. This time the web element we need is to get the text. Let me go back and show you something right quick. Hover it and notice the value that we return is string. Therefore, we assign it to string, 
with any name like error. Let's also print the error message. Sout error. The Selenium locators are link text, name, class name, and ID. Our web elements are click, send keys, and get text. Now, let's run. It passed. The console shows your password is invalid. Did you see how fast our test ran? Next are the wait commands, which helps when our test executes fast. They help by pausing between our execution statements. All of the Selenium wait commands are dynamic, so they will wait for a set time to expire or a condition is met. We should not use thread.sleep in our production code because it is not dynamic. However, it can be used in demos and debugging our code. Implicit wait, page load timeout, set script timeout, explicit wait, and fluent wait or the wait methods. Go back to our code and start by writing at test public void demo wait commands. We access implicit wait, page load timeout, and set script timeout by writing driver.manage.timeouts.i. We see all three methods. Implicit wait. This is the amount of time a driver waits when searching for an element. Page load timeout sets the amount of time to wait for a page to load. Set script timeout. I don't know many people who use this method. Page load timeout. Five is the time we're gonna wait. Time unit dot seconds. This statement will wait five seconds, then return an, ex an exception if it does not load in five seconds. We're going to go back and to the home page to see this link, which is dynamic loading hyperlink. We're going to use the partial link text locator. Recall the link text locator needed the exact text, but partial link text locator only need parts of the text. I am going to use loading since there are three hyperlinks with the word dynamic. After finding dynamic loading, we're going to click the link. On this page, there are two examples, but we want example two. Inspect and let's use XPath to find this value. Now, we can do a shortcut by doing Control F to find uh, a value in the DOM. With that information, we see the parent tag has div and an ID attribute with content as a value. With that information, let's write two forward slashes div brackets at ID equal two single quotes with content inside of the single quotes. Now, we're going to focus on the expanded elements. The next expanded element is also a div tag. So, we write forward slash div. Our last element is the example to hyperlink which has an A tag. Now we write forward slash A. Notice the first A tag is highlighted yellow. We write two brackets and two for the second A tag. Copy this value, 
Then go back to our code for the dynamic loading hyperlink. We write driver dot find element by partial link text. The value is loading. And with links, we click. In our code, we click example two. So to do that, we have to write driver dot find element by XPath. And we're gonna paste the XPath for the example two link. We click. Now, we just click the example two link. Now, I wanna show you something else. We have to click the start button. Inspect, it has button as the tag name. So, we're gonna use tag name as the locator. Here is the interesting part. We click the start button, but must wait for a message to show up. Hello world shows up. To confirm our test passed, we must pause until the message shows up. Let's get the text of hello world. Inspect again. And we see hello world has H4 as the tag name. This time we are going to use CSS selector. The parent tag is div tag and it has an ID attribute of finish. So as the value, we write hashtag for ID, then finish, followed by an angle bracket, H4, bingo. We're gonna use that also. Now, you can watch video 88 for more information on CSS selectors. I think it's 88. I'm gonna copy the value and go back to our code. Now, for the start button, we write driver dot find element by tag name. The tag name is button, but with the lowercase b. And we also click. Then get the text hello world. Driver dot find element by CSS selector. The value was hashtag finish angle bracket H4. And we're going to get the text. Yes. And assign it to a string with the value like message. Okay. Also print hello world. Sout message. Let's run. As expected, the test failed due to a an exception that says no such element exception. No such element. Unable to locate the element. Which element? The one that has hashtag finish angle bracket H4. That's expected. Our test did not find the element because execution was too fast. Let's add an explicit wait statement. Before we get the text. Uh-oh. Now, we're going to write web. Let's go up one more line. Web driver wait. Wait equals new web driver wait. Pass in driver in five seconds. Wait dot until, until what? Expected 
conditions dot presence of let me just do this one more time presence of element located now this method is an expectation that an element is present we can also use other methods but this method will make our tests wait until an element is present before performing the next action we can find this element using the same locator by CSS selector hashtag finish angle bracket H4 now let's run Bingo. This time it passed. Let's see what the console shows. We see hello world in the console. Next, we are going to look at the switch commands. We can switch to windows, frames, and alerts. There are two commands for switching to a window. Get window handle and get window handles. Both commands involve getting a handle. A handle is a unique alphanumeric ID that helps control a window. Get window handle gets the current window handle and get window handles get a set of window handles. The switch to command is used for switching to a window, frame, or alert. Selenium provides three commands for switching to a frame. We can use using the index which has an int data type string or web element for alerts there are four commands accept dismiss get text and send the keys an alert can also be called a pop-up window for our test we're going to use something on the home page to find the alerts and that is the JavaScript alert link. We have already used eight Selenium locators. So I want to use an advanced XPath way of finding this link. It's the XPath text function. Inspect and write two forward slashes, A, two brackets, text, parentheses, equal two single quotes then the name of the text which is javascript alerts bingo you see how it highlighted yellow copy the value that's good now we have to click the link and we see three buttons representing each type of alert javascript alerts javascript confirm and javascript prompts the first button is a JavaScript alert. It only has a message and one button. The JavaScript confirm alert has a message with two buttons. Last is the JavaScript confirm, which has a message and it has two buttons and the field to enter text like test. We are unable to find elements in this JavaScript alert. I'm right-clicking the mouse and nothing is happening. We get the message by using the get text command and enter a value using the send keys command. The dismiss command automatically clicks the cancel button and the accept command automatically clicks the OK button. Inspect the buttons. Notice there are three LI tags, which means list tags. Each list tag has a button. Button and button. So if I write LI angle bracket 
button, we find the value. Now this is the CSS value. If I take off the LI, if I take off the angle bracket, we still can find the button because this is the parent to child relationship. Either way, it's okay. Angle bracket or not angle bracket. Now, the so if I write this here method, our test script will always select the first web element matching this value. Cycle through the matches and we see all of them highlight yellow. Let's use this value and get the result message. The result message, when I inspect, we see it has an ID attribute with results as the value. That's all we need for our test. We start with the test annotation. Add test, public void, demo, switch, commands. Now we find the link and click the link. JavaScript alerts by writing Java driver dot find element by XPath. And we're going to paste the value. Bingo. And with links, we click. Next is to click the first button. Driver dot find element by CSS selector. And the value was LI angle bracket button dot click on our project we should write a unique value and not a value like li button however i want to show you how selenium matches the the first value that's matching this here matches the first web element like we saw in the dom know what let me use this description to explain it finds the first web element using the given method. So find element will match the first element using this value. Now, we want to get the text and click one of the buttons. There is no need to find the element because it's inside of an, an alert. So we get the text by only writing driver dot switch to, switch to the alert and we're going to get the text. Now, let's assign this value to string alert text. Something's not right. I misspelled string. There it is. Now, let's print the value. Alert text. Next, we click the OK button by writing driver, not find element, but switch to the alert. And we're going to accept. Last step is to get the string result, which is outside of the alert pop-up box. Therefore, we have to find the element by writing driver dot find element by ID and the value was result. And we want to get the text. Then print the text by writing S out result. Let's run. Bingo. The script passed and we see I am a JS alert. You successfully clicked an alert. Next is the actions class. This class helps us to perform actions with our mouse, like left clicking an element, right clicking an element, double clicking an element, and more actions with our keyboard. In this AUT, Let's use this horizontal slider. The test script will drag this slider and get the output value. Inspect the slider, and it does not have an ID attribute. We can find it 
using the parent tag, which ha which is div, and the child class, which is input. So I'm going to write div input. Next is the output, and it has an ID attribute with range as the value. Okay, our code will start with at test public void demo actions class driver dot find element by link text and the complete value is horizontal slider now we have found the link and click the link next is to find the slider by writing web element slider equal driver dot find element by CSS selector and the value is div input at this point we need the actions class description shows use this class rather than using the keyboard or mouse directly to use the mouse we write a reference variable like at act equals new actions then pass in the driver act dot drag and drop by the source that we're going to use is slider the x offset is five which goes left and right the one go up and down is the y offset and we're going to leave that as zero now we have to always make sure to write perform nothing will happen if we forget to write perform let's also get the web element output which is driver dot find element by id and the value was range let's also print the output by writing south output and we have to get the text of output. Now, let's run. Bingo, it passed. Let's see what the output shows. 2.5 in the console. That's it for learning Selenium less than one hour. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> All Part 1 eBooks and PDF documents are free. Programming books for UFT. Programming books for Java. Here's the Selenium Automation Book. And TestNG. Subscribe to get notification of future videos. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.